Praise God. It's so good to see new faces. I remember some of the old faces because they're getting old like me. <laughs> Except Carrie, she just keeps getting prettier. <laughs> I, uh, um, I want to pray uh, uh, for two things, if we could. One, I would like to, us to pray for Ken. Um, it's not an easy thing to lose a loved one, as you know. Uh, death is a real thing, and we know where we're going when we die. But it uh, doesn't help those that are left. And so I'd like to pray for him. If you would just join me. Dear Heavenly Father, Father Ken loves you, Lord, and he loved his beautiful wife, Father. And Father, we ask you, Lord, that you have taken her into your arms, Lord, and you have showed her heaven. And Father, we ask you that you will give Ken that peace, Lord, to know that without her, Lord, that she, he has God still. But she is now relieved of any pain, of any cancer, of anything that ever caused her hurt, Lord. She's now in heaven. And Father, I praise you for that in your wonderful, sweet name. Amen. Yeah. Sure. Her sister passed away this week. Oh, my. You know, it, her sister's name is Jenny. Jenny? Well, let's pray right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you have Jenny in your bosom. Father, I don't know her, but I know that you do. You know everyone, Lord. And it doesn't matter, God, what any people say, Lord, that when people leave, Father, we hurt. We want to be comforted, Lord. We want to have something, Lord, to be there with us. And, Lord, we know that that is you. Your Holy Spirit comes down and spreads wings over us, Lord, and covers us, Father, and shields us, Father, from hurt and pain. Father, Jenny is, is in heaven, Father. I, I believe that. I don't care what other people would say, Lord. I believe that. And Father, I ask you, Lord, to be with her, Father, in a real way and show her around heaven. Show her those streets of gold, Father. And Father, then comfort, Lord, comfort those that are left. Father, let the angels spend their time round about him, Father, touching, Lord, touching. Thank you, Jesus. God's there in a real way. You know, in my lifetime, talking about death, you know, I have been, I've pastored for over 30 years. And I pastored with my dad 20 years of that. And uh, old school and new school came together. And there's a lot of people that believe, well, they weren't saved. Or they, we don't know if they knew the Lord. It doesn't matter what you know. We never know what happens the time that they're gone. In a split second, God could take him. We don't have to know where they've been. Oh, man, but they were bad. It doesn't matter. It matters to God, not us. I think sometimes we want to be the boss. And by, yeah, I would let God be the boss before I am. Because he's a lot better than I am. He knows what's going on. But I also want to, I just want to, if, if, if not having a mass bothers you guys, you let me know. I carry one in my pocket. I've kind of, uh, I, I, I obey the rules. Uh, when uh, people are around that are, can be caught real easy. If they're unhealthy, or, I make sure I wear my mask. Uh, I've already had COVID. Christmas Day, I s went to the hospital and spent three days in the hospital. But uh, since that time, I'm pretty healthy for an old guy. <laughs> I'm glad everybody laughs. <laughs> Turn with me to Mark. 
We're going to talk just a we're going to talk just a, f a few moments. I'm not quite the preacher uh, as I used to be, but mark the fifth chapter. I believe that as pastors and as men of God, we need to be talking to the church about uh, what the church is supposed to be. You know. We're, I've always thought we need to put a, a big red cross on the side of the church that says hospital. If you're hurting, if you're having problems, come on in. But I have seen places on churches where they have a, a sign that says, you're welcome as you are, but if somebody came in that was dirty, uh, wasn't dressed right, was kind of stinky, that we wouldn't really want them in our church, would we? But that's the ones that God wants us to claim. You say, well, they don't have anything. That's right, they don't. <laughs> they got us. I know my wife and I, you know, we like living alone. It's kind of nice, but we've never been there but for a long time. <laughs> I mean, our son-in-law and, and daughter and the two grandbabies, they couldn't live any longer, so they took the upstairs, and now I built us a one-bedroom apartment downstairs. And we had a little shed in the backyard, and uh, my, one of my grandsons and his wife, well, she wasn't married then, but she is now. <laughs> That's one of the prerequisites that I had. Anyway, uh, they... Uh, they're living in the, the, what we call the she shed. And uh, it's because they can't afford to live. Now, the Lord has grace us so that we can do that and help them. And I think that's what the church needs to be. So long we have become this institution that everything has to flow this one way. It can't be. Well, this is a story about the lady with the issue of blood and... Um, a lot of people don't understand that was just that she was having a period for a long time, 12 years straight. And the ramification or the, or the great thing about this story is that she had that for 12 years and in the middle of the story, uh, Jesus is taken to a uh, gentleman's daughter uh, that is dying and she was 12 years old. I don't think coincidence happened in the Bible. I think they're done for a purpose, to make us understand exactly. I mean, this little girl was born when this lady started having the problems. And the Lord is healing both of them at the same time. That, I mean, that's something. I, I just love it. Anyway, uh, uh, come down to uh, 20, 21st verse and Mark the 5th chapter. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus, or Jairus came there, seeing Jesus, fell at his feet, and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. Now, anytime Jesus went anywhere, there was something, a whole bunch of people coming after him. It's what preachers wished would happen to them when they were walking, that people would come to the church to follow him. Well, it isn't the pastor that makes that happen. That's the people and God. I mean, a pastor can be the most elegant speaker in the world, not me, but it can be, and, and would draw people in, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to draw people in, to show them salvation, and to show them a change that can happen in their life in an instant. The whole life can be changed. Well, this lady with the issue of blood, now in Leviticus, if you, if you read, uh, it's in the, uh, I think, second chapter of Leviticus. <clears throat> it was a law. She couldn't be out and touch anybody. If she touched somebody, even accidentally, they had to go home, wash, wash her clothes, and wait until the evening before they could come out again. That was the law. Well, here, this lady, uh, 
she's, you know, she's not doing really well. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been a subject of bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. I mean, she didn't have anything left. She mortgaged the house, sold her car. Well, I guess didn't have cars today. Anyway. <laughs> but she, I mean, everything was gone. Now, some people that come to church, if they don't have anything, they feel convicted. Say, well, I wish I could give in the offering. Do something else for the church if you can't give finances. I'm sure that Dwayne would love somebody to mow the lawn. But, you know, there are a lot of things that we can do. But this, this lady had lost you. I'm sure that she was a widower or a woman that was alone. I'm sure that a man didn't want to put up with that. But here she is. She's, she's got this thought. Oh, just a second. I've lost my place. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm up here by my... I got blood on my Bible. And it's right at this scripture. That's why this scripture means so much to me. I don't know why I, I was bleeding one day. Anyway, a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to the issue of bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, how do you think she heard about him? There was a crowd of people around him. And I'm sure she's heard of it before. This Jesus guy, he heals people. See, that's what the church needs to be known for. Jesus is here. If you are hurting, come here. We'll accept you. Our problem is that we don't. I was, my wife and I were looking at a little cartoon, and it, it's kind of sad that it, it was funny, but it's kind of sad. This lady is talking to a couple that's uh, sitting in the pew. And she says, I see that uh, you are new. And they said, yes. She says, well, you're in my seat. <laughs> now, that's funny, but that happened in our church when I was a kid. Uh, she, uh, I won't name her because she's gone and she's with Jesus. And, uh, but she uh, came up and somebody knew who was sitting in the seat. She says, you're in my seat, please. <laughs> That's not church. We're supposed to be different than that. Amen? Amen? All right. So she heard about Jesus. She came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Just touched it. Because she thought, if I touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. Now, this lady was touching in desperation. I mean, she didn't know what was going to happen. She prayed that it would happen. And we don't even know if she was a Christian. We don't know that. Yeah. Everything was gone. Even those in the law couldn't bother her too much. What are they going to tell her? Go home? That's where she had to stay all the time anyway. But she went through this crowd and touched him. Now, she had nowhere to go, no money. She was not to be around other people. Twelve years she had suffered. She had nothing else to do. She decided to go with Jesus. Now, that's the way we should be. I think sometimes we wait till the last minute. I, I can take care of that. I, I, I can really take care of that myself. And then finally, we're saying, oh, dear God, help me right now. 
We have to know that Jesus is there all the time, and he's the same for every person. When someone comes up to you in any place that you're at, and you don't know them, do you speak to them? I pray for people a lot. I, I, I have a book, and I pray for people. I, if they're in my book, they're being prayed for. And a, later, a lady came up when I was sitting in Kaiser, and I kind of said a lot because my legs don't want to work real good. I keep praying, God to heal him. And he tells me, well, lose weight, son. You'll be all right. <laughs> Just like the doctors tell me. But anyway, her name was Christina, and she, she came up to me. She was an older lady. And uh, I said, how are you doing? And it started from that. She wasn't doing well. She was hurting. She didn't have any family. And I sat there and prayed with her. And then I've had her in my prayer book, and I pray for her every time I pray out of my book, which is every day. I try to make sure that her name gets mentioned. Because God knows her. God knew this lady before he, she, he, she touched Jesus. She had tried everything else. She said, well, maybe that Jesus thing will work. Well, it did. Let's read on. At once, Jesus realized that the power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Now, here comes the uh, assistant pastors here. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. <laughs> you see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet, you can ask, who touched me? I don't think I talk to Jesus that way. But I think at times we do. What do you know, God? How do you know how I'm feeling? Because uh, he made you, formed you, knew you before you were born. Amen? Amen. And knew what your life was going to be. But Jesus kept looking around and see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, and told him the whole truth. She was afraid. It was a touch of fear. She knew what was going to happen with the high council, with those that were in leadership. She had laws that she had to follow. But she didn't. She kneeled down before him. She was afraid, but she kneeled down before him. And because of that, she was healed completely. Even the part about not touching anybody. She was healed. I wonder how many doctors would want to see her then. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus and the, the synagogue. Ruler, your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? They didn't believe. Now this woman, it was a touch of faith when she reached out. I mean, she's seen people all around him. People were pressed up against Jesus. Were they being healed? Did he say anything to them? No. He pointed to this woman. In Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now the faith, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. That's faith. And that's what this woman had. She was hoping that it would work, and it did. And if you go down and read the rest of the story, uh, he gets to uh, the house of Jairus, and uh, there's wailing and crying and moaning, and, and they're, they're all upset because the little girl has died. And Jesus comes in and is kind of angry. He says, you all leave. She's not dead. She's asleep. Oh, then they laughed at him. 
Just a little bit ago, he had healed a woman. But they're laughing at him. So Jesus goes in and tells the girl, rise. And then they, he tells the mom and dad, feed her. She's fine. Now that's what we are supposed to be as a church. When people come through that door, they have desperation. They have not been able to do anything else. They have nothing else left. And they come in. We need to grab them. Do it gently, though. I mean, <laughs> and let them know that they're loved. And then show them that love through our actions. That's why I love when churches have food banks and they have clothing drives and they have, you know, I'm like you. Uh, I like a clean yard. I don't like junk laying everywhere. Uh, it's kind of hard when you have grandkids. But anyway, uh, we, we see the homeless, and we see all the garbage and trash around, and, and we get upset because of all the garbage and trash, not even considering them. Uh, you know, if you take, and, and there's been people that have died in their tents without anybody knowing, all alone. They are desperate and don't know where to go, and the church needs to be that light for them. That's why I ask if you meet somebody, and, and I, you, you have to be careful. Make sure that God is with you. You don't want to go up and talk to somebody and they uh, take a gun to you or something. But if God is on your side and you're with God, God will protect you. And we need to help them whenever we can. I'm not telling you to give your house away. No, unless God spoke to you and said, give your house away. But I'm telling you to help people that you can. This woman, without Christ, would have died. She was sick. And I, I know that it's hard. Uh, Mom and I are on a fixed income. But we try and help people. Why? Because we have been where we had nothing, and now we don't have nothing, but we, <laughs> we have... We still have each other. And I have how many grandkids? 17, I think. Seven great grandkids. I'm blessed. Oh, I'm blessed. But I want you guys just to, to get into your mind when people walk through the door of a church and when they're coming or when someone comes up to you and asks you, do you go to church? And you can tell them about this wonderful church. And when they come in the door, accept them. Not everybody's the same. You know, not everybody's as handsome as Isaac and I am. You know, that's... <laughs> you know, it's just that we need to help people and be that lighthouse. When I pray, I have a few churches that I pray for. One of the pastors, the pastor's wife, uh, is uh, dying of pancreatic cancer. And uh, every time I get to their name and their church uh, in my book, I start weeping. I can't, I can't get by that without weeping. I mean, I pray for a bunch of other people, but that one has hit my heart. So I, I called my, I mean, I wrote my... Uh, uh, he's the head of uh, oh, all of the pastors in, in the organization that I belong to. The, this church belongs to, uh, is with uh, Cal, uh, uh, Grace International Churches and Ministries. And I belong, to, I've been ordained through them since 1976. Oh, I'm old. <laughs> anyway, they passed her, and here she is hurting. So I, I, I wrote to, to Stu and Debbie and asked them, uh, uh, I wanted to know more about what's going on. And uh, she says, David, it's funny that that happens to you. Because she says, every time I get to her name in my prayer list, I start bawling. There's a reason why God uses us. 
And we need to be open to that. And let him use us. When God tells you to pray for somebody, that's not the time to uh, sit down and watch TV. It's the time to pray. Let's be better stewards of what God has given us. This is a beautiful building. It should be packed up to the nines. I'm telling you, it should be packed. Or say we can't because of COVID. I mean, I believe in COVID. I was there. If it bothers you that I don't wear a mask when I'm around you, just ask me and I'll put my mask. I always carry it. I'm never without a mask. But I'm praying that God will heal our land. And in the way of healing all of us and those that are on the street, they need to be healed and comforted. We need to be with them and let them come into church. Don't throw them out because they stink a little bit. Amen? This woman was, uh, I, I can't believe in, in my own mind's eye, if you had an illness that people knew about because they knew her, she had gone to every doctor there was, spent every dime that she had. So she had to be known. And she came up into the crowd. Do you think people told her not to come into the crowd? Well, of course. She wasn't supposed to be there. She wasn't supposed to be touching him. But she did it anyway. And because of that, she was made whole. Now, I had read through the scriptures and have never found what happened to her after that. That's one of the things in the Bible that I want to talk to Jesus about when I get up there. Why don't he finish stories for us? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you'll be coming to, and it comes to the end, you say, well, what happened after that? <laughs> what happened to that 12-year-old kid? I'm doing... <laughs> but God is so wonderful to us. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, if all works out, I, I will be here again next Sunday. So I, I let you know now so that you can stay home if you want to. <laughs> or you could ask people to come. <laughs> but let's all stand. Oh, Father, dear Heavenly Father. Father, how I love you, how I love your word. I love, Lord, that you took time for this lady to be healed, Lord. And Father, you take time for all of us, Father, to be healed, Lord, whether it's in our body or in our mind, in our spirit. You take time, Father. Now, Father, let this church be that beacon on the corner, Lord that is so bright, people going by have to come in to see what it is. And Father, we'll give you the glory for that, Lord. Father, bless those that are here today. Father, give them all of their needs and desires, Father, that line up with your word. And Father, we'll give you the praise and the glory in your wonderful, sweet and precious name. And Father, I pray right now for Dwayne and Susan, Lord, in their travelings, Father, be with them. Take care of them, Lord, in your wonderful, sweet, and precious name. Amen.